Hey ladies and gents, this is Linda, Faychick777, and today I'm coming at you with the Design Team Project for Renee Bouquets. Now this project, I again found a really cool item at Goodwill, and it is a sliding frame set. It's actually three frames that are all joined together, and the two frames in front kind of slide open to reveal the bigger frame in the back. Um, but I'm going to show you what I did with it. I'm going to move my sign out of the way and we will get started. I'm going to adjust my camera up just a pinch. And this is what I came up with. I know, right? Kind of cool. Um, I'm kind of happy how this turned out. Um, it's going to a special someone. Um, I'm not going to give any details because it'll just give it all away. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I had fun with this. And when I saw it, I'm like, instantly had this idea. And I'm like, I think this might work. And like I said, um, the two frames in front, they slide open. Um, when I go to open it, bear with me because it is a little tight sliding them um, because of the gesso on the project, but that's okay. That way, if it go falls to the right, you know, or to the left, you know, if you turn it up on its side, the frames won't just fall out. They were actually supposed to have some tiny little screws on the back side of these two front little frames, um, and that's what kept it from falling out side to side, but I forgot to put the little screws in before I glued the stuff to the back frame all together. I couldn't just open it up and and uh, put the little screws in, but the gesso holds it nice and secure anyway, so all worked out fine. Um, like I said, started out with gesso. Um, I love doing this particular technique with gesso. I use it as a texture, and what I do, depending on um, the color of the base of the product, I'll just slap on one or two kind of primer coats of gesso. And then I will take this, you know, a different, whatever size I want, a little pouncy brush. I particularly use this size here. Um, and I will sit and pounce it on the project, the gesso, pounce, 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 all over the thing, heat set it. And I will do that for probably at least three coats besides the one or two primer coats ahead of time. So it takes a while to do, but it gives this really fine texture on it. And I just love that technique. Um, I think it leaves it really nice and shabby. Um, anyway, so I did that all over the project first. Uh, then I took the Crafters Workshop stencil, the little artist stencil, and I will show you all this up close, but I did uh, some stenciling in um, specific spots, you know, around the project. I use little micro dots um, stencil as well. And I did the stenciling with the um, Finnabar texture paste, the white crackle. And it looks kind of cool because the stenciling is obviously crackled. Um, Renee has in her shop the clear crackle. I wanted to let you know that. I haven't had the pleasure of using it yet, but she does carry it. I'm kind of excited um, one of these times I will get it um, because this is the first time I've actually used the crackle and I love it and I think the clear crackle would be really cool um, because then you can you know paint over it and you can paint over this white crackle too of course but you can kind of make the clear crackle whatever color you want um, so anyway wanted you to know that if you want to try some of this crackle texture paste in the clear head over to Renee's shop um, then around the project, uh, after I did the crackling and stuff with the stencils, I took some uh, Prima Color Bloom spray and cotton candy. This is also in Renee's shop. And I just hit it in certain areas. Okay. Um, and then I went to town um, just, you know, altering it up and making it look pretty and shabby. Um so let me adjust my camera a little more and we'll get a little bit more up close and personal with it and I'll show you other things that I've done. Okay, so up goes my camera. And a little bit of down. I may want to go up a little bit more. Okay, and we'll just kind of show you the outside first. 
Okay, so there you can see um, the stenciling with the artist stencil from Crafters Workshop. Um, the micro dots, you can see some of the cotton candy um, color bloom sprays there. And I wanted to show you. Can you see how, look at, you can see how that stencil is crackled. It's really cool. Um, and obviously, it says crackle. It's going to crackle, but I just like how it turned out. I wasn't sure with the stencil in such small um, design, but it works. And you just put it on like major, major thick to get a nice, good crackle. So I think that turned out really cool. Just kind of gives it a little bit different texture. Okay. Um, like I said, uh, Jesso at first, let me bring it up there so you can see, see the really fine, fine texture. Like I said, take some time, a lot of coats, but um, it, it just really makes it look cool. Okay, and I just kind of love, I just hit certain areas with that Prima Color Bloom spray, so that turned out kind of cool. Um, for the background, uh, the paper lines I used was... Oh my gosh, um, a little Prima romance novel, and oh my gosh, I can't remember what the other one was. The pink shade. I've got to, I've got to take a peek here, people. Um, like I said, little Prima romance novel, and oh, I remember some of. If I can get it, ha, the Paper Studio vintage. A more paper. Um, wonderfully gifted to me by a beautiful lady. Thank you so much, sweetie. Um, anyway, that's the pink paper I used. And I'm trying to think. There's one more other paper, but when we get to it, I'll show you. Might be from one of these two lines. I can't remember. You know how I love to mix my paper lines. Anyway, so what I did on... Let's start at this left side of the frame. I wanted to make these this obviously not a picture frame. I wanted it to make some 3D art and um, wanted it to be shabby chic but have a little bit of, I hesitate to say steampunk, but it's not really grungy either. I just wanted it to be kind of shabby chic with some metals and kind of be a little bit um, eclectic because the person this is going to, um, you know, she loves shabby chic, she loves eclectic, she loves using metals, um, a little kind of girly grunge. So that's kind of what I did, but you know, like I said, I hate to call it, it's not really steampunk or girly grunge, but it's kind of um, essences of those, I guess. Um, so on top of this first frame, this is um, another frame from Michaels, and I just used the gesso and little pouncy brush again and textured it all up and glued it to the front, and it almost looks like a 3D, um, because this is a frame, um, and I just kind of put paper in behind it, there's a lot of space in there. It almost looks like a shadow box on both sides. And that's kind of the look I was going for. I didn't want the background paper to be absolutely flush with um, the elements on the front here. I kind of wanted them to be in the background a little bit more to give it a lot of depth. So anyway, frame on the front. Um, behind that is this large, or on the front of that, <laughs> my brain's all backwards. I've got a beautiful, large metal butterfly. And again, I used the gesso techniques with the pouncy brush on it. And then on the front of that, I used one of Renee Bouquet's beautiful butterflies. And let me show you um, one of those butterflies up close. This butterfly is called the English Tea Rose. This is what it actually looks like. It's a double layer butterfly, but I took it apart. Okay, I used one of the layers on this side of the frame and one of the layers on the other side of the frame. But this is what it looks like when you get it. Beautiful butterfly. Okay. So butterfly on the front there. And then I used a Prima um, typo bulb here. And these were gifted to me by Sabrina. And this actually said the word two on it, T-O, but I took the two off. It's gonna be hard to see. Um, the T, I guess, of the two. I left the O and then I rubbed on a little X to put my little XO signature on there. It is kind of hard to see, isn't it? There it is. 
because the metal and stuff behind it, but an X and an O. <laughs> um, and in between the typo bulb and the little Rene Bouquet butterfly is a Prima clock hand, which is from Rene's shop. At the bottom of the frame, this is one of those $2 bin items at Michael's, a little wood um, banner, and it says adorable on it. And then I used a Prima metal heart gear. This is little Finnabar, um, I don't even know what these things are called. They were, you get a little package of them, these little gears and nuts and, and bolts and stuff. Um, put it on the front of that, and then I added a tiny little key. Okay, and then for some extra added oomph around the project, um, I used a little multi-medium and some of Rene Bouquet's glitter glass in sand. And let me show you that really quick. little jar like this comes in sand and it actually is kind of a very beautiful kind of vintage pink when you get it beautiful and she has lots of shades of this glitter glass very nice quality um, and so once after I attach the glitter glass to it then I use the Prima Bloom spray the cotton candy um, over the top of it I put some over here <laughs> I'm looking through my camera so Multimedium, little glitter glass, and a little cotton candy spray here, here, all the different areas around my project, and I'll point that out. Um, all my papers, you can kind of see, I used a black thread and did a little sewing around the perimeter of all my papers. So let's move over, move over to this right side of the frame. Um, again, some stenciling. Um, up in here, have some of the beautiful glitter glass. A little glue glass over here, have some in this little box here, added a little uh, Prima Color Bloom spray on top of it. This little shadow box of sorts is one of those Prima wooden boxes that you get the um, wood icons in. So I just attached that into inside the frame. Um, at the And I used the uh, gesso again, textured it with the little pouncy brush whole thing inside and out. At the very tip top I wanted it to say kind of like a phrase so it says this way for love. Okay so the this way street sign is by Prima the little shabby chic metal treasures. Um, this little gear here is from Bead Landing. Um, in front of that I've got a you could just barely see the tip top of it is a Prima resin oval frame that I got from Renee's shop. Coming out to the side are Prima resin wings. I've got a couple more gears here. I've got some spare parts uh, gears here gifted me by Sabrina. And then um, I've got another Prima metal heart gear here and this is a Prima metal locket. Behind here, little pink flower is, uh, you know, from the $2 bin from Michael's, gifted me my P. This is the other butterfly, Rene Bouquet's butterfly. What I did on this one, as you can see, it's the same butterfly as over here, but I used the gesso on the top of it and did some texturing to it. Um, and then you could see like the little bit of glitter that's already on the butterfly that still showed out nice and pretty above the texture I didn't texture over that um, and then I added this is a little seven gypsies arrow here and another little prima metal gear here and on top of that some of the glitter glass and again with some of that cotton candy spray okay this is a Tim Holtz little whatever you want to call it charm and then this little charm comes from Renee's shop. It's the Romantic Trinkets Pack and this is the little charm inside of the Romantic Trinkets Pack. And that pack comes with a charm, um, a resin frame, acrylic resin frame, um, a cherub um, cameo, and a couple of resin flowers. But I love I love this charm, <laughs> um, the infinity symbol. I just, it's a fun symbol for me. I just think it's a beautiful symbol. So, and that just kind of hangs. Okay. And then onto the top, I kind of already showed you the stenciling. As we come over to the side here, hanging off the side, I just wanted to hang just something fun. So this is one of those Tim Holtz uh, buckles. I was going to hang like a charm from the buckle, but when this slides open, the charm kind of gets lost behind it. So I didn't, I uh, for 
went for gone for goad <laughs> the little hanging charm so i just left the cute little buckle there um on top this is a beautiful ivory chiffon flower from renee's shop just beautiful the beautiful beads and um bling in the center of it then i've got a bunch of like wild orchid craft and flowers and flowers from the michael's two dollar bin um this is another bead landing gear this is a little Tim Holtz knob right here on top. This is a Tim Holtz um, word placket. Uh, and then amidst the flowers up here, a beautiful, beautiful Rene Bouquet butterfly. And it's called My Romantic Heart, and it's in shades of pinks. Okay, so there's the front of the frame set. And give me a moment here. I'm going to lay it down to open it, because like I said, it's a little bit... Um, tough to open but I'm glad because like I said then the frames won't fall out so when you open it and reveal the inside just like that inside is a working clock I know right I love it um, when I saw this I knew immediately I wanted to make this frame set into a clock and I think it's just beautiful. Let me show you the back, how it is. So you can see how the frame is all put together. And there was just enough depth in there that I could add a tiny, well, it's not tiny. I mean, it's a normal size motor of the clock, but the clock hands and stuff are very tiny. But it was, there was just enough depth. Um, and the clock hands uh, mechanisms itself wasn't too tall that these frames could actually just slide close over it and you can see it works perfectly wonderful. So romance novel paper on the inside and now I remember um, this um, outer paper, the very behind dark black paper is from the archivist uh, paper collection. I knew I used one more paper collection. Um, so on the top at this left side, this is a metal uh, mailbox by Prima. This is from Renee's shop. Um, and then I've got a couple, again, of those Michael's uh, flowers. I've got a couple of bead landing gears here and here. I've got a Prima metal heart gear here. This is a Prima resin bird from Renee's shop. Down below, this is a spare parts arrow. This is a Michaels Woodward from the $2 bin. It says Everlasting. I wanted this to be romantic. As you all know, I love to have a little romance in my uh, piece here. Um, up in the corner over here is just a metal uh, corner piece there. Um, and then these numbers... Roman numeral and regular numbers are all by Prima. They're metal. And what I did for the 12 at the top is I used the metal uh, Roman numeral for 10. And then I added two tiny little keys to signify the 2 to make it a 12 at the top. And then, of course, the cute little clock in the center. I did a little stenciling here with the micro dots as well on the front. And then I added again some multimedium and some of the Rene Bouquet's glitter glass and sand here and here and over here, kind of spilling onto it. Added a little bit of the Prima um, cotton candy color bloom spray. I know, right? I love this. It's going to be hard to get rid of it, but I am, and I really, really hope she likes it. So I'm going to set this. It sets just fine. Sets up just fine, and as you can see, they don't fall out. So even though I forgot to put the little screw in as stoppers, <laughs> then my frames aren't going to fall out because of the gesso. So there is my project for Renee Bouquets. I will have the links down below to everything Renee Bouquets. I will have the link to my blog for close-up photos. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye!